Hello everyone. Um, today's lecture will be um, on biology, on cell theory and prokaryotic cells. So this is a very, very fundamental bio biology topic. Um, and I'm sure many of you have learned about the intricacies of cells, the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes, and all of this cell theory and other stuff before. But just in case we do want to go over it and make sure you guys fully understand it um, compared to the scope of the MCAT. Okay. All right, um, here's my information along with my email. If you ever want to contact me with any questions, please feel free. Um, we also have a group me where um, we'll be posting any updates or changes. It's also an easy way to get a hold of me or any of the other tutors or um, there's a bunch of students on there. They may have answers to any questions or anything you guys may um, want clarified. Okay, so learning objectives today. What is the cell theory? What is the history of cells? What are the prokaryotic cells and how are they different from eukaryotic cells? And what are the different types of prokaryotic cells? Okay. On to the content. First, we want to talk about cell theory. And this is very, very important to biology, very fundamental, but it's actually so fundamental that probably many of you already know what it is without even ever hearing about it, probably. So what is the cell theory? It basically says that cells are the basic unit of all living organisms. All living organisms is, is all living organisms are made up of cells, and cells can only be made from other cells. They, the hereditary information or the genetic information is thus passed from one cell to another. Essentially, what this is saying is that everything that's alive is made of cells. Um, and cells, the only way to make more cells is to have an existing cell that makes a new one, essentially. Okay, I'm sure many of you have already knew that, even if you didn't know that was the cell theory. But yeah. Okay, as we talked about in our previous lecture, genetic information is always stored in the cells, which act essentially as the blueprint for the cell's function. Um, and you can see here a cross section of an animal cell. And the genetic information in an animal cell is always located here in the middle of the nucleus. We'll talk about um, later today, actually that's not always the case for all cells that um, they don't, some of them don't even have a nucleus, um, but they all have some DNA or some kind of genetic information. Whether it be DNA, some have RNA, other, um, but they always have some kind of genetic um, information stored in them. Um, when a cell matures, it undergoes a process called mitosis um, in, eukaryotes, and we'll talk about a little bit more on for prokaryotes, which um, the cell splits apart and creates a daughter cell, which should be, in most cases, an exact copy of itself. Um, it's called a daughter cell because it kind of essentially like kind of um, birthing a new cell, and that's how cells are created. Um, and this is also how cells pass genetic information from one to another. Um, like I said, it should most of the time be an exact genetic copy of the parent. Um, that's not always the case because mistakes do happen. Um, it's not a perfect system, but um, usually the idea is that it should be a mostly exact copy of the parent. And that's how you get genetic information from one generation of cells to another. Okay. Um, cell types. So there are two main cell types, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are far more complex, and you've probably spent most of your studying and your college and high school career learning about eukaryotes, um, because one, they are more complicated, and two, most of the stuff that we deal with in biology, like humans, animals, plants, um, those are all eukaryotes. They're not prokaryotes. Prokaryote cells are much simpler, and they're found uh, essentially only in bacteria or We'll talk about archaea or prokaryotes as well. Okay. Probably many of you haven't really, unless you've taken like a microbiology course or something like that, many of you haven't really um, learned too much about bacteria. Um, and you've mostly been focusing your biology studies on animals, plants, maybe. Okay. And this, um, hopefully, some of you remember, is called a phylogenetic tree. I'll just write it here phylo and genetic tree. Okay. This essentially um, shows kind of the progress of, I guess, evolution. Um, so this was the starting point of 
I guess, all life, since this is um, talking about bacteria and eukaryotic cells. So this is the starting point of all life, and then it branched out into two different things. And this branch is known as bacteria. And there's just many, many, many different types of bacteria you can see here that kind of like branched off this main line into specific um, subsets. Um, then in this branch, right, which eventually became known as eukaryotes, there was another split right here, another branch point. Um, called archaea. These are essentially like the precursors, I guess, or they're very similar to bacteria, but different enough from bacteria that they aren't classified as bacteria. And actually, um, I feel that they are um, equally different from bacteria as they are from eukaryotes. They're kind of like, uh, I guess, a, a different branch, right? Even though they look kind of similar to bacteria and a lot of their characteristics are similar they're still very different and distinct from bacteria, okay? And then at this branch point, you had the archaea, and you also had these um, eukaryotes, which became plants, fungus, animals, molds, and all of these other things, right? And this is where we would fall in, right, in, in this branch line, right? Um, and this is obviously going from, um, for this, this is obviously going from bottom to top, in terms of time. So this was at like the beginning of life and this is um, kind of the now, right? Or something like that. And it goes up. Um, as to prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, these are all prokaryotes. So archaea and bacteria are all prokaryotic, meaning that they, um, oh, well, actually we'll talk about the differences in a bit, but just remember that these are prokaryotes and these are eukaryotes. The only eukaryotes are these, okay? So you can see like the majority of actually, uh, the majority of life is prokaryotic and it's much simpler, but we also have obviously only eukaryotes, okay? But remember that bacteria and archaea, even though they're both prokaryotes, they actually are very distinct, even though they do have similarities, okay? Archaea aren't really covered too much in, on the MPAT, so it's not very like, important to know all of the very detailed specifics about them, but you know that they are distinct and like what they are, okay? And what the genetic tree actually looks like, right? Archaea and eukaryotes split off um, at a different branch than bacteria. Okay, now let's talk about prokaryotes. What makes a prokaryote? The main distinction in classification of eukaryotes versus prokaryotes is the presence or absence of a nucleus. As you mentioned, the nucleus, and you can probably learn before nucleus, is that big um, thing in the center which holds the DNA and all the other stuff in animal cells and plant cells and stuff. Prokaryotes, however, do not have the central nucleus in which the genetic information is found. Instead, the genetic information is just stored inside of the cell, like um, floating around in most cases. Another main difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is the presence of a cell wall. All prokaryotes have a cell wall, but only some eukaryotes have a cell wall. As you probably know, plants have cell walls, but animals like humans don't have cell walls. So um, remember prokaryotes, all prokaryotes, all bacteria, all archaea have cell walls, but not all eukaryotes have cell walls, some don't. Prokaryotes also have no membrane bound organelles. Remember the membrane is in, um, is the outside, right? And then the organelles, um, some of them are membrane bound. Like for example, the endoplasmic reticulum is considered membrane bound, which um, prokaryotes don't have membrane bound. Um, this is just very simple. You can just memorize like this, okay? DNA in prokaryotes, right? So the main difference is, um, it, the differences uh, in DNA and genetic storage are the main distinction between the cell types. Right. So as mentioned, you carry out DNA is found in the nucleus, but in prokaryotic nucleus doesn't exist. So the DNA simply exists in the cell, right? Furthermore, prokaryotic DNA is circular in shape compared to the linear eukaryotic DNA. Um, you probably remember eukaryotic DNA is more like this, whereas um, prokaryotic DNA, some of you may know of if you took genetics, plasmids in certain bacteria are used in genetics, um, genetic research now. 
they're circular and that allows us to like kind of like cut them like this and you'd be able to take that like snip that part out and that's like a big thing in genetics right now in genetic engineering in genetics in general um uh, similarly um prokaryotic dna has no introns or bound proteins uh, dna has a lot of proteins on it and it has introns which are not essentially called the non-coding regions um, when you turn the DNA into RNA, um, so if you have this DNA, um, if you, when you turn this into RNA, a lot of these would get um, kind of spliced out. So maybe this section and this section would uh, get spliced out and um, only this part, this part, and this part would be kept in for the RNA and that would actually be what is used to make the proteins. So some sections are non-coding sections in um, eukaryotic DNA called introns. Most prokaryotes don't have introns. Um, there may be some exceptions, but I think a, ge a good general rule is they, they don't have introns. They just have all coding regions, OK? OK, and this is an example of what a bacteria cell can look like. So you can see here it has this cell wall, um, has these uh, pilus. Um, has the membrane inside this yellow thing inside the cell wall. Um, it has the DNA right here, just floating around, not in a nucleus. Has these ribosomes, again, not membrane bound, um, cytoplasm, just like everything else. The flagellum, which we'll get to later on, is very important for um, mobility, for movement of the bacteria. Okay. Um, next. Okay. So, binary fission. Um, as prokaryotes are always unicellular organisms, meaning that they only exist as one cell, um, whereas obviously you know humans and animals and plants are made up of many, 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 many cells, and they're called multicellular. Uh, unicellular organisms reproduce through a process called binary fission. The process is fairly similar to eukaryotic mitosis, but it's much simpler. Um, there are many in mitosis, there are many stages and checkpoints and um, different like the mitotic spindle forms um, throughout mitosis. And, that, and that's really there to ensure that there are no errors in replication or splitting of DNA, or sorry, splitting of the cells um, to make sure, and the chromosomes and the chromatids, to make sure that there are no issues in the organism. So for example, one main issue that you probably know happens when you have genetic malfunctions is cancer um, or other genetic diseases, especially hereditary diseases, um, are caused by errors in mitosis. So to prevent this, we have a lot of stages, checkpoints, and um, mechanisms to kind of keep that in line. But prokaryotes don't really care. Obviously, they don't care if they get cancer because they can't really get cancer because it's just um, expanded growth or something like that. They don't care about genetic defects. So prokaryotic fission is, as a result, much, much faster. But it's also a little bit less accurate um, than eukaryotic uh, mitosis and has a lot less steps, a lot less um, going on. And uh, here is a example of binary fission. You can see it's much simpler. Um, it creates a copy of the DNA right here, right? the replicated DNA. Um, then it elongates, kind of like split more, then it forms like a cross wall, and then it just splits apart, right? Very simple um, compared to mit mitosis, which has like the G phase, the M phase, and all that. Okay. Okay, now moving on. As mentioned before, bacteria are the most common prokaryotes. They come in three distinct shapes. Remember the other prokaryotes are archaea, but most, of the prokaryotes that you'll see at least are bacteria. Um, they come in three different shapes and these shapes are rod shaped, spiral shaped, and spherical shaped. And these have different names. Rod shaped are called the bacilli, um, spiral shaped are called spirilli, and spherical are called co 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 kochi, kosi, I don't know. Um, but yeah, and you can see here, um, some examples, Streptococcus, um, right? That's um, very common ones. Um, some of these, these flagellate rods, the Salmonella, um, H. pylori, um, yeah. Okay, 
Next is bacteria cell wall types. Imagine all prokaryotes have cell walls, but there are two different types of cell walls bacteria can have, gram positive or gram negative. Gram negative bacteria have a thin peptoglycan layer and outer lipid membrane. Gram positive bacteria have a thick peptoglycan layer, uh, peptoglycan layer and no outer lipid membrane, right? And the main uh, distinction, so these are the two main distinctions in terms of what they actually are, like biologically. But um, actually, um, another way we distinguish um, gram positive versus gram negative is um, through like uh, fluoresis. So when you do an experiment, um, gram positive will be purplish, whereas gram negative will be, I think, a bit like uh, reddish, not sure, but um, I know the color is a big difference, and I know gram positive is um, um, purple. Okay. Okay, and this is kind of just an example of what they uh, look like. So as you can see here, gram positive have a thick peptoglycan layer, this little purple thing, right? It's very thick. There's a lot of layers, whereas this one in gram negative is very thin. But uh, gram positive, there's nothing above this. But in gram negative, they have this uh, lipid layer, right? You can see here, this looks like just any membrane. Like here, you have the phospholipid bilayer. Same thing here, you have another just uh, lipid bilayer, okay? Uh, outside of the peptoglycans, okay? It's not like super important, but sometimes you may be asked gram positive and gram negative. So it's nice to know. Okay, lastly, I wanna cover on uh, movement of bacteria and bacteria are made mobile by a structure called flagella, which I mentioned uh, before. Flagella are like propellers on like a boat, which allow the cells to move in an aqueous environment, which means kind of like in liquid. Um, they're rigid filaments, just like kind of like how your muscles are like rigid filaments. Um, they can work together to rotate and propel the bacteria in a direction. Flagella respond to a number of outside stimuli like light, chemicals, et cetera. So if you have, um, if you shine like light on it, they may move towards or away from the light. If you put um, chemicals like sodium or whatever other chemical um, they respond to near them, they may go towards or away from it depending on um, whether they need or whatever. And this encourages them to either run towards or away from such stimulus or to simply tumble in place. Right, you can see here that these little string-like flagella, um, they, if they rotate uh, counterclockwise, they can, uh, it's called running, and they can actually just like propel it forward. So they kind of like propel the, the thing forward, the bacteria. Whereas if you have this clockwise rotation of the flagella, they kind of tumble in place. They kind of just eventually spin in place. And this is to prevent, um, especially in like an aqueous solution, to prevent it from being moved by, by the medium or being moved in any other ways. <clears throat> Sorry, it just spins in place and like tumbles in place to avoid as much movement as possible because it wants to stay in the same position. And that's different from running, which is obviously going away or towards something. Okay. All right, so that, that's about it for this lecture. This one was really short and it's very simple. And I think that's it's just, it's very simple and um, a very fundamental topic that many of you have covered and it connects to a lot of other topics. And if you still have any questions, because I know I didn't go over in very much detail, some of this stuff, um, we have a lecture on cells, on uh, mitosis, on genetic replication. Uh, we have, if you're confused a little bit on the phylogenetic side, we have um, a lecture on that. Um, that we have a lot of like cell lectures um, that go into a lot more details like the specifics. And this lecture was really made to just cover the basic overview of prokaryotes, which we haven't really covered. And I know a lot of classes don't really cover that deeply. But like I said, it's it's relatively like simple topic, and it's not unless you go really deep into it. Obviously, microbiology can get very detailed, but at least for the MCAT, you don't need that, okay? So um, thank you very much for uh, tuning in and um, have a great day.